Today we are going to be performing a lumbar puncture which began on December in 1890 on a 21 month old boy with a stiff neck. The main indication for this procedure is suspected CNS infection, but it can also be used for diagnosis of a subarachnoid hemorrhage to diagnose, stage, and treat different types of cancer, reduction of cerebral spinal fluid, and injection of spinal anesthesia. The primary contraindication for a lumbar puncture is increased intracranial pressure, which could be indicative of a space-occupying brain tumor. You're going to be looking out for signs and symptoms of this through a progressive headache, focal neurological signs and symptoms, progressive deterioration of mental status, and in particular, papal edema on your fundoscopic examination. You're going to want to make sure you CT if you see any of these things before doing the procedure. Other potential contraindications of a lumbar puncture include a suspected or known coagulation disorder, a local infection overlying the site that you're going in, uh, abnormalities such as nevi, uh, palpable bone abnormalities, and also in patients who are severely ill. If you do decide to lumbar puncture in the presence of a space-occupying lesion, you have the potential to cause a herniation of the midbrain through the foramen magnum and putting pressure on the brainstem. Scientists have miraculously been able to find out that the brainstem controls this interesting phenomenon known as breathing. Now that we are all set up, we are going to sterilize the area with a betadine or iodine solution we had previously set up in the lumbar tray. You're going to use all three of the sponges, soak it up, and work from the middle outwards in large concentric circles, providing a large area of sterilization. Here I'm throwing my hands up like a field goal because I'm throwing an imaginary fenestrated drape over the patient's back. I am palpating the posterior superior iliac spine and noting that the L4 spinous process lines up with that and you want to go either in the L4, L3 inner space or the L4, L5 inner space. If you noticed I made an indentation with my fingernail to remind me of where I want to go back to later. It is particularly important not to go above the L3 spinous process. This could cause spinal damage and cause paralysis in the lower extremities. This is especially imperative when referring to pediatric patients because their cord extends all the way to L3. We are now going to draw up the local anesthesia, which is lidocaine in this case, out of a glass ampule with a filter tip needle. For simulation's sake, we don't have a sharps container or an exchange needle before entering the patient. Some practitioners like to provide a field block before providing their patient anesthesia, but I don't like to stick my patients four times before giving them the local, so what we're going to do is inject the needle, aspirate to make sure you're not in any vessels or CSF, inject about a third of it, and do this three times while pulling out. While you allow the local anesthesia adequate time to function, you're going to recheck the catheter and you're going to insert it at an angle towards the umbilicus with the bevel facing horizontally towards the hips. Insert the needle until you feel a slight pop, remove the stylet, and check to make sure CSF is flowing freely. If it is, go ahead and hook up the manometer and check the cerebral spinal pressure while stabilizing the needle. Remove the manometer and go ahead and start filling up your tubes, beginning with tube 1 and ending with tube 4. You're going to put about 1 milliliter each, and if you notice here, I pull this advanced maneuver and grab the fake patient's spine to assist flow. After you've achieved the required amount of fluid, you're going to remove the needle in a fluid manner straight out and apply pressure with a sterile gauze for a minimum of a couple minutes. There really is a lot of stigma behind a lumbar puncture, but most of that can be prevented by proper technique and completely aseptic technique. There is one complication we do experience frequently, and that is called a postdural headache. Uh, that can be helped a lot by having the patient lie supine for at least an hour, not to overexert themselves the day of the procedure, uh, to tell them about over-the-counter analgesias they can take, and caffeine at 300 milligrams orally every six to eight hours. This was a lumbar puncture by Andrew Zimmerman, and I hope this helped.